Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, we are going to be covering reworking a spindle connector for a client. Uh, the end user actually purchased a kit, uh, the DIY kit that he purchased, he thought he could assemble. He then assembled it, was having trouble, and he said, you know, at this point I really feel more comfortable if you rework the cable. Um, after seeing the connections, I wanted to go over this, not to berate anybody, of course, but to make this a learning experience of what you guys should be looking for when you solder your cells. Now, in this portion of the video, we're going to be looking at, uh, again, what these connectors look like as far as, you know, how everything has been contacted as far as soldering, any tinning issues. And then what we're going to do is I'll remove all of these conductors and I'll tin one of them and show you exactly how it should look when it's properly soldered, when we get the proper heat penetration and we get the flux where the way it should be and get that joint just nice and, and perfectly smooth because that's really what we're looking for here. So again, I'm going to just dismount the connector. Of course, I've already dissected the cable that was attached to it. And you can see here, we've got a gap. And you can see that gap. This is very, very common when you do not have proper tinning on your conductor. Now, of course, these are brass conductors and you can see here, I can take this probe and go inside there, and that's a definitive issue. When you get these blobs, and a lot of guys in, uh, in a lot of videos illustrate these types of blobs, there's a couple different reasons for this. Typically, it's solder being used without the proper amount of flux, uh, or flux for that matter of high quality. Could also be a heat issue, but typically, it's a flux issue. There's not enough heat with that flux to actually get it to clean uh, the actual conductor and then on top of that to get the proper penetration. That's what's leading here to a blob. We also see conductors now penetrating the, the actual solder. And again, this is a three-phase cable, guys. This I would highly recommend be very, very careful with. If your connectors look like this, they are connected technically, which is something that always gets brought to my attention online. Yes, they are connected, but these can lead to issues, especially this one here with that gap, because that's not a full actual conductor in the sense that it's making uh, a full weld all the way through the cup. We do not know how much solder has penetrated into those cups, but I can tell you just by looking at this as we rotate, if this solder was fully in them cups, you wouldn't see gaps like you see here. So again, we've got blobs on the bottom. Uh, this actual green lead was wrapped around like this on the black lead. And this is something else that I see a lot of end users do. They try to fight the colors. And when I say fight the colors, they try to articulate the cable to get the proper ground in the position of the allocation for whatever terminal is allocated to ground. In this case, of course, on spindles should be pin number four. What you would do is lay your cable out and then you would naturally solder in the format that the cable is. Of course, it's arbitrary what leads you use to actually be allocated to power leads, and why that is is because they're all supplying power. So as a three-phase cable, power, 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 and then we have our ground lead. So now what I'm going to do is now we've seen what not to do. We, we see here that this, and you can see right here the gap when it starts bubbling over what you start getting closer to. And this is a ground, and this, of course, is a hot lead. If this naturally, and we still have a nice gap here, but if, God forbid, this ever made contact here, you'd have a dead short. So, again, that's where fire hazards happen. And once again, this is a connector that certainly should be reworked in best practice for this type of application. Um, again, when you're dealing with anything low voltage, I have a lot of guys that say, well, you know, I don't use flux on my low voltage connections. That's totally up to you. But once you understand the principles of how to use flux and see how easy it is to solder with it, you'll ask yourself why you're not using it. I've had many, many clients tell me that they're like, wow, I can't believe the difference in my work when I'm using the proper flux. And it really, really does make a difference. And I'll show you so you guys can check it out. So again, stay tuned for the second half. I'm going to get everything taken care of. I'll remove these other leads, get the cup set up, and then I'll do the other half and we can take it from there. Okay, guys, right now I wanted to capture this on video. You can see inside this cup, I'm just going to grab a probe as a pointer, and inside that cup, there's not a drop of solder in there. I just cleaned this. You could see that funny haze. Again, this is a lower quality solder. You can tell that because there's not a chrome finish there. I don't know if it's a, a combination of the flux as far as mixing or the solder itself. But inside that cup, it's just solid brass. So that tells me this was never tinned properly. I'm going to show you desoldering 
one of these conductors to see if we have full penetration, which I've already identified we don't, but I want to show you the difference. Got the iron set right now, she's at 800. Tip is clean. I'm going to come over here, quick dab, and just touch. So I get asked all the time, you know, why do you charge so much to rework? And I'm going to show you why. Watch. There's the conductors that we were talking about. Barely in. You can see they're all folded over now. Just touching, and look at this. Now, there's no penetration there. This is the actual conductor that came off. Put that there. And now we're left with this. And once again, that same conductor inside here where it's, it's actually not connected, you can see exactly what's left there. Okay? Now, you come over here, and you've got, and this is part of my kit, my good wick, which is a desoldering braid. You can see I've already used it. You cut your end off. Okay. And of course, try to keep your desk as or your area as neat as possible. Now, I always like to use a little more flux. Of course, it is pre-flux, but I use a little more. The Kester just absorbs it so nice. And realistically, it makes your job a hell of a lot easier. So now what we're going to do is we're going to come in on an angle, and I'm going to just put the actual tip of this right on there. And you'll see it start bubbling, and as soon as this gets hot enough, now again, this is a lower quality solder you can see it already it's not heating if it's not heating add a little a little solder come in and there we go once we get that solder contact point you can see it's tracking don't fight the solder now you see the color change you already got your actual solder wicking up on your desoldering braid now you want to remove this piece come down to a lower piece now you see how tedious this is. So in terms of rework, this takes some time, not to mention all of the parts involved with this. I'm going to keep going in here. I'm just heating everything up. I'm going to do the same thing again. Get that nice and hot. And now I'll come in with some solder. I'm going to come right in. And you can see, done. And you'll see the chrome finish go right away. And that's telling me that that leftover residual solder is just not high quality. We're still not there yet, guys. So we're just going to keep going. Keep taking it down. And I'm going to keep going until this is ready to be re-soldered the right way. So we'll do the same thing. We'll grab This time we'll just grab a little solder. You can see, once we get a little tin, golden, there it goes. And you'll see it just wicks in ever so gently and there it goes just wicking up and there it goes and inside there once again you can see that cup is not tinned at all let me see if I grab my probe let me just grab that and they can look right there and inside there big gap big air gap so this was never actually seated as far as the conductor and that again is what you have when these actually are not tinned properly with the proper flux and high quality solder. Again, if flux was used, it certainly wasn't used in the right capacity because we don't have that actually bottomed out. So I'm gonna clean the area up. I'll go through the rest, but I wanted you to see this. I'm gonna clean this uh, terminal up because we're not quite there yet. And then we'll continue with showing you actually applying solder to a lead and what it should look like. Okay guys, in this part of the video, you can see I've cleaned the cups, and now I've used the Kester 186 and the Kester number 44 solder, and you can see a tremendous difference. Look at how the cup has full penetration. It's fully wet. Everything inside there is wet, and this is now ready to accept whatever lead you go with. It's always, oh, it's actually been cleaned as well. Went through and cleaned everything. And guys, when I tell you cleanliness, is very, very important when you're doing this. I cannot emphasize that enough. Every terminal must be cleaned. So again, all of the extra time that this takes, now you understand, once again, I have to charge to actually takes me quite some time. Um, the rework involved with this uh, on some cables, depending upon how bad they are, uh, I've seen cups that are totally destroyed. Um, it's, it's, it can get really, really out of hand and it's really best practice always to tell me ahead of time what you actually have done because I'm going to find out number one anyways and number two, uh, it's going to naturally cost you more when I find out that I get it and there's more damage than, uh, again, I was actually made aware of. So again, we can see here how everything is set. 
I think it's pretty obvious that there's a tremendous difference in the finish. Now what I'm gonna do is just lock it in. Lock her in our vise. And again, I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes. And that means there's not a real cable going in. I'm just showing you a lead. And we're gonna come over here. I'm gonna take the flux and just wet it. Now I've got the lead. Now this is a piece of my DS flexion. It's 16 gauge. And this is the ground lead because again, we do have the yellow and green stripe. And what I wanna show you, and this is just another tip, is when you're dealing with bare copper and we're dealing with a much softer cable, we don't wanna melt our PVC. I get asked this question a lot. Hit this with some flux and go to 10. Really all we want to do is join everything, but we don't want to burn anything. So we use common sense, and what we do is we just allocate solder to the tip. And what's going to happen, because copper is going to naturally use the capillary action with the flux, it's going to absorb right down. You'll see. Boom. Done. That's really all you need, because as long as that's all joined, as soon as you come in here and touch this, you're going to be set. So many times I see clients that are burning their conductors because they're not paying attention to how far they go. Now this is a pet peeve of mine in terms of what I like to do. Now I come in and I clip the cigar, so to speak. Give me a nice clean edge. And that'll tell me if that solder has wicked in. You see how solid that is? Now you know you're golden. Now what we're going to do, now that we have a nice conductor, we come in here. And you can see how that fits perfectly. We're going to hit this again. We've already, we've already uh, applied flux to that. Hit this again. And we're going to come over here. I'm going to show you now how we do this. Make sure that tip is clean. I'm coming in at a high angle. Get that drop. Touch. And I want that heat to penetrate. Boom. That's one. Now we're not high enough. You can still see the pocket is not fully filled. We're not exactly level, but you can see the tremendous difference of how that conductor looks. So what I'm going to do now, same process, teeny bit of flux. It's kind of amazing how the flux knows exactly where to go. I'm going to just bring this down a little bit. She's going to just adjust the camera because it has to work with me so I can see what I'm doing. Now we come over here. Take a little solder, and now I'm just going to go through my copper ball and just rub it in. That's why we got a good tip. Come in, teeny bit. Come back. I'm not trying to adjust things too much, and I'm just going to keep building this up. Keep on building it. There we go. Keep the heat away. You'll see it bubble. And that solder just levels itself. We'll do one more time. We do have a little flux there, but I'm still not happy with that. I like to go a little bit more. Done. You can see barely enough flux on there. You get that residue, so to speak. And now I'm going to come in a teeny bit more. I'm going to touch that. And the flux will do the rest. You'll notice I'm going over the cup a little bit just so we get penetration. And we're done. And there you go. Now I'll clean that, give you guys full visibility. Let me just get in there. And I'll clean it and then she can film it. Now again, of course, this is much easier with no cable in the way. <laughs> uh, I know many of you are going to say that and that's absolutely true. But I wanted to do a video to show and highlight how this process should be done and what the finish should look like on a properly soldered anything. This is exactly what you should be looking at. Now, if we look at this carefully, we can see that the cup is filled. We actually have an end on the cup that is not. And I'm going to go in there and touch that one more time to make sure we have absolute perfection. You can see it. It's right over here. But that cup looks absolutely beautiful in terms of fill. You can see how smooth it is, and the penetration of the heat is definitely there. You've seen I left the iron on there, and again, this is a hot iron. But the way we're doing it and the way we're moving with this is so nice, so smooth, that it does not matter. I jig my hand, I'm coming up, and then I hit. And there you go. Now you have perfection. And that's it. Now we come in, clean. Every connection gets cleaned, of course, we all know that. Um, there we go. Come over and just do that. 
And now you can see, we just get that last remaining remnant there. We got a lot of green from that old residue of flux. And you can see that conductor is totally sealed. Everything in there, there you go. Let me get my, uh, my probe, much easier to show you. Everything in here now is totally sealed. You can see how it's all one piece. And that's exactly what we want. If we pull this out of here, we can look at it on the bottom and the only residual you have is from where he actually left the overflow, but you can see now how that cup looks. And it's just one piece and it's totally penetrated. So everything there is totally joined. And of course, we don't have any burned casing. Casing is fine. Matter of fact, clean that too. We can clean that joint right up there. And uh, she's telling me to get the camera or get the light out of the way for the camera. And there we go. And now you can see we're right on the money. And that's it. That's how she should look. You can see the chrome finish. And that's exactly the way the conductor should look. So again, guys, um, I don't think I have to explain too much with this because usually what ends up happening is you guys look at this and you're the ones that really are the best judge as far as how they should look because a lot of this is just logical. What looks the best? I mean, that's really... Uh, in terms of the finished product, you can see here there's no burns. Everything here looks uniform. The chrome finish, uh, again, it look, I get told all the time how cool they look. I mean, that's really what guys are looking for. And in the end, that's the conductor that you want to stay with because you know that joint is the only way this would ever really fail is if the cable was destroyed. But as far as the conductors themselves, that's exactly how we do it. And again, no overflow. Try to keep it clean. And if you've got that chrome finish, you're in it to win it because that's definitely going to be the overall best finish and the best conductivity you're going to get. That's how you know your connection is clean. Um, if you're doing rework, I highly recommend you clean everything. Be meticulous. If you're reworking your own cable, it's okay to make a mistake. Just be uh, un or have it understanding that, of course, every time you do have to do rework, you have to cut that cable. So it becomes real tedious and you'll learn quick because it costs you money every time you cut the cables. So if you have a specific length and you're learning, I recommend ordering a couple feet more. Guys say, are you trying to make more money? I said, no, I'm just being realistic because once you make a cut on that cable and you need the exact length you have, you're too short. So then you're in problem zone. Ordering a little more is never a bad thing. But again, them finish, those are all ready to go right now. So I'll just remove this and solder it on to his cable and he'll be all set. So again, guys, I hope the video has been helpful. I hope you've learned something. I hope it's helped a couple of you. Um, I know it's answered many questions, but it brings up many more. Please don't be afraid to message me direct at storm2313 at gmail.com. You can also message me through my eBay store, eDealers Direct. You'll see links in the beginning of the video and at the end. I hope that this has helped and I thank you all for your support. Take care.